Hello, fellow parishioners. My name is Mary Brophy. I would like to speak to you about the Lazarus Ministry. A Lazarus minister is one who assists in various ways at a funeral or a memorial mass. It is a truly rewarding and comforting experience. I consider it a privilege and an honor to participate in. We are responsible for preparing the church, the altar, greeting the family, and assisting Father Michael at Mass. Our funeral coordinator, Lucky Desh, and Father Michael are wonderful to work with and are extremely helpful. I experience a great sense of satisfaction and hope I can contribute to comforting the families of the deceased. I sincerely hope some of you will consider joining the Lazarus Ministry. Nick Matera and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. We welcome all those who are watching this morning as we live stream our liturgy all around the world. And so we place ourselves now in the presence of God. Father in heaven, may our journey be one in which we are freed from our sins and our deficits. Lord, have mercy. May you raise us up in holiness and grace. Christ, have mercy. May forgiveness and compassion inform our thoughts. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises true heirs to the treasures of heaven, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses, taking some of the spirit that was on Moses. The Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. As the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of a nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on all of them? The word of the Lord. <laughs> 
Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts, precepts of, of the, the Lord, Lord give joy, joy to, to the, the heart. heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts, the precepts of, of the Lord, Lord give joy, joy to, to the, the heart. heart. Though your servant is careful of them, very diligent in keeping them, yet who can de detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. The precepts, the precepts of, of the Lord, Lord give joy, joy to, to the, the heart. heart. From wanton sin especially, restrain your servant. Let it not rule over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of serious sin. The, the precepts, precepts of the Lord give, give joy, joy to, to the, the heart. heart. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded. And that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from, your work, from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one, but he offers no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ Amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands into Gehenna, into unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Better for you to enter into life crippled then with two feet be thrown into Gehenna. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two to be thrown into Gehenna, where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. What a wonderful gospel to begin Sunday morning and go and have breakfast. What Jesus is talking about, really, is, um, is all about making choices in life that give life. And choice is, is very important because so many people make really bad ones and make a mess of things. 
And um, what Jesus is saying here is there things in your life that burden you and cause you not to follow a path that gives life to you and to others, then fix it. Fix it. Especially when we take a look at the uh, book of Numbers, where they're all um, uh, anointed with the Holy Spirit to go out and prophesy. And as I've said many times, a prophet doesn't predict the future. A prophet predicts what will happen in the future if you don't change your life now. Parents know exactly what this is all about. If you don't stop that, you're going to have a big problem, young man. Talk about brothers and sisters, share your toys with your cousins when they come, all of that. Parents are all well aware of that. If you don't get good grades in school, you're going to wind up, you know, being a dog catcher. Although if you work for animal control in Wayne, you're probably well paid. But nonetheless, nonetheless, it's, it's all about letting people know that if you don't change your ways, life is not going to be good to you. And, and we all understand what that is. In St. James's letter, he really does frame it in very powerful ways. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts. You have condemned. And as he says, that's not really going to get you anywhere. And I love this one line. The corrosion of your gold and silver will be testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. Look at what we see in, in the media about people who give themselves over to greed and, and to lust and, and, to, and to just accumulating power in, in life, and look what happens. Look what happens as their lives unravel and the lives of those who they have touched, abused, the lives of those who they have interfered with. And we think it's new. I think that the letters from St. James makes more sense now than it did then because the, the paper and the media are full of people who, who do exactly this, live in luxury and pleasure, and that's all that, that matters to them. We, we certainly should enjoy life and everything that it brings, and I know I do and I know most of you do as well. But when that kind of pursuit becomes all, of, all there is, then bad things happen. Very bad things happen. And, and that's what Christ is saying. You know, if, if you know you're going down a bad road, then you have to fix it. You have to do what you need to do to set your life straight. He uses very, very powerful and graphic language to describe it, but that really is really what he's talking about. And, and the most powerful thing that you can do is to be a caregiver to others. That's really the most powerful thing that you can do. And if there can be any, any good that comes out of having lived through the pandemic, which is still ongoing, it's the notion of caregiving. And we are all included. Not everyone in this room is a policeman, a fireman, a priest, um, uh, or any kind of an official kind of person who does that for a living, but every one of us, because of it, has been drawn to it. We've been drawn to being caregivers to others. Even, even in our own, our own families, where, where I'm one of, of the many, where people, people today in their 60s and in their 70s are caring for parents in their 80s, 90s, and up to 100. What a very different world. It wasn't kind of supposed to come out that way, but that's where we find ourselves. So sometimes it's not, it's, it's not the hero in first responders who you have the sign on the front lawn for. Sometimes it's you. You're the heroes. I'm one of them. We all can be when we're called to that. And I've, I've said many times, it's the, the parables are the inspiration, the good Samaritan, the prodigal son, feeding all those folks because they had no food. And Jesus in charity said, we will take care of your need. So that's, that's really where it's at. And Jesus says it very simply. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will not lose your reward. And what is that reward? It is a good life here in the kingdom of God on earth, and it's a good life to come in the kingdom of heaven. And he keeps it so simple. 
Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink. It's that simple. If only that were all we were asked to do, it would be easy. But sometimes the phone rings and life interferes and we find ourselves on the front line of taking care of a family member or someone we love. And it's never convenient. It never comes at the right time. But this is, this is life. And, and we cannot deny that. So if, if you want to store up treasure and you really want that treasure to be in heaven, then take a look around at all the wounded and the hungry and the poor and so many others who cry out for aid and assistance. And often we don't have to look very much beyond the people in our neighborhood, our own family, our own circle of friends. It's all laid out right there. And again, these are the choices. You can chase after the wealth and, 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 the, and all of the, that stuff, you know, all the stuff that can corrode and corrupt you, or you can chase after what gives life. And, and it's right in front of us all. All you have to do is listen to the parables where he lays it all out. And it's done very, very privately, and I think that's what I always enjoy about the parables. Jesus always takes these people off quietly, and he, he heals them. Notice how often that he's preaching or proclaiming and someone approaches him when he, he's, you know, with his disciples in an entourage. He's going to maybe to a synagogue or to a public square. He's going someplace, and someone runs up and says, my daughter is sick. My, my son is ill. And, and what, is the, what do the disciples do? Well, we can get to it later. Jesus says, no, no, we have to do this now. Because even then, he knew it's never convenient. Never. But he stopped everybody in their tracks and says, let's take care of this. Even remember with Lazarus, what does is, what is Martha and Mary say? If you had been here, our brother would not have died. And Jesus weeps. We, imagine, Jesus weeps because he, he understands that he couldn't get there and how much pain that is. And what does he do? He brings Lazarus back for his really dear best friends. So it was always personal. The gospel was personal. And so must our lives embrace the personal in the way that we go out and touch others. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We place our prayers and petitions before Almighty God, and the response, of course, is hear us. That people who feel their lives has no meaning receive understanding and loving care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. That victims of abuse find the courage to share their stories and are able to get out of empathetic advocates. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For those who generously share their time, talent, and treasure, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For the homebound, for those in rehabilitation, and for those in hospice care, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For those who are in need of our prayers and all those who have asked us to pray for them, and for all whose names appear on the sick list in our parish bulletin, may God fill their lives with healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. For all who have died to rise with Christ in eternal light, especially Mike Stars, Cecilia Terranova, Josephine Cardell, Scott DeGro, and Mariano Lopez, for whom this Mass is offered, Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with Jesus. thee, and blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
pray for us Amen. sinners now and at Amen. the hour of our Lord death. death. Amen. Our Lady of Consolation, pray for us. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be opened up for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself the gift, since our praises can add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ. We join, therefore, angels and saints, in one great song of joy. holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall. 
that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we will be gathered into one people by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to a fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, clergy, religious, the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, praising and glorifying you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, <coughs> all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We share with each other a sign of God's peace.
behold him, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our announcements and milestones are the following. As you can see, we have all the cuddly creatures. We want to thank all who purchased and donated. After the next Mass, there will be even more of them, and they will make an awful lot of young people, little kids, very, very happy. The last day of summer um, is coming up soon, and uh, these past couple days have reminded us that the world never stands still. Seasons change. We thank you for all the cards brought in for Mayor Vergano this weekend. We leave baskets again next weekend if you forgot at either exit to the church. 
We have happy birthdays to two dedicated parishioners, Gene Kelly, who works at our parish center. Um, he is uh, also a uh, Marine involved in the uh, local Marine League. Um, he's a great guy. And Joe Nevitinsky, who volunteers at OLC. Um, Joe is 80 years old, and he's sitting right back there. Happy birthday, Joe. All the best. We have a breakdown of how we manage uh, finances um, in terms of separation of responsibilities. And um, Joe reconciles um, all of our checkbooks here. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's quite a, uh, a job. Comes in all quietly and sits there and makes sure everything is the way it's, it's supposed to be. And that the pastor never makes out a check to cash, which is the worst thing that you can do. <laughs> we welcome um, to the Desch family, Barkley like they need another dog. I think Barkley is the one in the front, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway. Um, next next um, weekend, the 5 o'clock Mass, we will have the ever-popular Blessing of Animals at the 5 o'clock Mass Saturday evening. We didn't have it because of COVID last year, but we will have it. It's extremely popular. Well, there, we've had upwards of 38 dogs, lizards, turtles, rabbits. Um, one little girl came with her hands like this one, came up to me, and, and this little green thing popped out. <laughs> it looked like a worm, and it was a lizard. And I said, oh dear, please keep that, hold that very close in the church today. It, well, oh, it's a lizard. Well, it looks like bait, so you really need, you know. <laughs> to a dog has a different idea. So it's a 5 o'clock Mass next week. If you have a dog that does not always behave and you want to bless, leave it in the car. I'll come outside. We'll bless the dog outside. Like mine doesn't behave. We have a three-year anniversary in heaven to Papa Red Trenicost. Uh, he left us September 3rd. Um, that was uh, Pat Trenicost's father. Uh, 2018, there we all are. That's me there. We went down the shore. The fellow on the left is his barber. He was more interested in seeing his barber than he was me. Um, I came and kind of frightened him a little. The barber just gave him a nice haircut. Um, a shout out to Mickey and Ron Meyer for doing a tremendous job with the first food collection since COVID. Social justice ministry has gone above and beyond. It was a great food collection, and thank all of you who helped. Happy birthday to Alexander White, who turned 15 this week. Alex earned his Eagle Scout rank in the Boy Scouts, did all the Stations of the Cross for us all over again. Um, really did a great job. Happy birthday, Alex. <laughs> 15, huh? That's uh, uh, 15. <laughs> you get to a certain age and you begin to think that, gee was I turned 15 and we heard that awful news about Mr. Lincoln. Wasn't that terrible? <laughs> you know. Congratulations to Linda and Craig Van Leeuwen on the birth of their baby daughter. Um, Shaylee, isn't that quite the face up there? Look at that. My goodness gracious. Uh, born Friday, February 17th. And a big sister, um, Julia, who's right there. Good. Learn how to change diapers, honey, real quick. Mindful and meditation experience. Um, this is uh, um, a wonderful thing. Um, Charlie Semerero is a trained heart math instructor. It's a very legitimate process of learning relaxation and calming your heart down. Um, it is medical, uh, medically proven to work, uh, and we're offering it here. So please uh, take a look at it on the website or um, one of these papers. Get well wishes, get well wishes go out to uh, parishioner John Davis. Um, we wish him a, uh, a speedy recovery. Any other uh, anniversaries or birthdays we missed? Everybody's no anniversaries or birthdays. Okay. I want to um, also share with you the fact that, you know, as you know, my mom has been with me for two years in the end stages of dementia, and um, uh, she is making her journey home this morning, actually. Um, it's the end of a very 93 years. No tears. It was an incredibly well-lived, full life, and um, that's all I can say, and it was my privilege to be able to have her in the rectory uh, and to nurture her along. Uh, we have made some arrangements, um, and uh, we do believe these will hold. A visitation will be here at the church Tuesday from 3 to 7. The wake will be held here at the church. More Funeral Home is handling the services. 
The uh, trip to the um, burial the next morning will be private by invitation only. A memorial mass and breakfast will be celebrated on Saturday, October 9th at um, 9 o'clock here in church, and everyone is welcome. And it will be um, an uplifting uh, celebratory and incredibly happy celebration of a great and, and full life. And anybody's welcome to join us as well as to come to the wake. But check the website if you need to do that, either ours or the one from the Moore Funeral Home. And now let us all stand and pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to those whose suffering we are united. Whenever we proclaim his, his life, death, and resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Celebration is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other.